final score, Wrexham 5, Salty Hull Boars nil. <laughs> wow, yeah. firstly. And secondly, as the Wrexham fans go to applaud the supporters, what a show they put on for the terrific five-figure crowd. Um, Paul Mullen hitting a hat-trick. Wrexham having to earn the right against a strong Salty Hull side who came here with good intention, but were ultimately just blown away. The first half was entertaining, but it was tight. Mm. And the, the key moments came with two <laughs> minutes to go to the break. Wrexham pressing Solihull and forcing mistakes, a pattern which would lead to four of the goals. On this occasion, Wrexham's pressure led to a poor clearance of the halfway line. Tunnycliffe met it with a towering header back into the box. Palmer was onside because the player making the clearance was still by the corner flag, and he did ever so well, took it on the chest pivoted and smashed it into the bottom left corner and at the start of the second half well I mean basically it was seven minutes of Solihull trying to get out of their own half and failing because Wrexham's press was so good and ultimately it led to the second goal when Ford put pressure on the ball won it back found Palmer and Palmer very calmly again turned and found Mullen who put a lovely finish across the keeper and then off the post 26 minutes later Mullen had a hat-trick first one was, uh, came when Lee tried a, a few tricks, didn't quite. Oh, big upon he didn't. So this one, <laughs> Lee tried a few tricks, didn't quite work. But he passed it on to Mendy, and Mendy tried a trick, rolled his man, got round the back, drove it in the goal mouth. Hayden with an open goal tap in, tenth goal of the season for the centre back. And then he, and then Mullen, with a couple of tap ins to round off his hat trick within three minutes. Firstly, Palmer with a powerful strike which took a deflection and hit the post and dropped down for Mullen to volley into the empty net. And then Mullen combining nicely with Lee, he smashed a powerful shot. The keeper parried that and Mullen was there to get there first and tap it home. 5-0, gentlemen. And, oh, and it was a red card, I forgot as well, yeah. sorry. When it was 2-0, mm -hmm. Kyle Storer, who could easily have had a couple of yellow cards, frankly, before this, uh, lunged in wildly on Young. A challenge that drew a direct red card, which means he's suspended when the teams meet uh, on January the 1st. And, wow, that was uh, that was quite the show, wasn't it, really? They fell apart at that point, but, frankly, we'd already dominated them, hadn't we? At the start of the season, I was becoming worried. So sort of Lee signed for us, and we already had Tom O'Connor. We didn't see much of him last season because of the injuries. And I was starting to think, ah, is this midfield really going to grow? And I think yeah. today, mm, yeah. I think I've answered that question. I feel this midfield is becoming stronger. Yeah. And the second half of last season, we were a lot stronger. I think, wow, from today, I think our midfield, is, it's proven why these players have come here. They look very good. I mean, Lee was just fabulous. Just yeah. gets the ball, tries to make stuff happen. Bang. So creative, you know, as yeah. that pass from the outside of his boot to Luke Young at some point. Mm. He just controlled the game, Elliot Lee did. And we haven't even talked about man of the match yet, have we? But yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it's going to be a hard choice, that. <laughs> well, maybe that's a conversation we ha should have, because yeah. unlike often, uh, I think it's a conversation, because there's yeah. a few players that on any other day would be head and shoulders man of the match, yeah. and I don't know which one we... Well, I think I know which one I'm going for, but I could make a case for four or five. Yeah. But I suppose you could start with the defence. Mm. People like Hayden, yeah. th they're holding the pitch, holding the up the pitch and playing yeah. keeping us up the pitch so they're having a really good game yeah and then you move on to the forwards and you think Palmer had a good game yeah he scored good. the goal that really mattered yeah he set up mm. a bit mm. and then Mullen obviously three, three goals that yeah. trick one yeah. that's normally good enough in my book yeah. and then you look at the midfield and uh, I just thought there was a standout in the midfield mm. and he's constantly linking both sets playing sets of players playing well yeah. and that would have to be where I stop and go for Lee can I, can I throw yeah. one extra name yeah, in there yeah, was, which is Mendy yeah. he was the man of the match from the the official man of the match yeah. so yeah. Yeah. he was very threatening wasn't he yeah. he got an assist in the end yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah all those players for me I think would have a strong case I, I know who I'm going for as well yeah. so Jay let's see if we get uh, a, a clean he seems speech. to be getting it every week it's Elliot Lee. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he, he seems to be getting this award every single week, and yeah. he's a player who's too good for this level, quite clearly. It just has to be Elliot Lee. Just bewitching, wasn't he? Just yeah. so good on the ball, and, you know, I mean, Storer was 
getting, you know, he hobbled off. It might have been repetitive strain injury from constantly <laughs> trying to foul him. <laughs> well, couldn't, half time he couldn't because he just ran away from him. It was glorious, um, wasn't it? For me, this has been performance of the season. Uh, mm. You know, against a side who are going to be playoff contenders. They're gonna. You know, we've seen it first half. <coughs> they they were matching us. You know, it, it took that goal later on to the second half, which I think made them really crumble. And wow, amazing. I, I don't want to see this team in Wembley, and I don't want us playing this team in Wembley. <laughs> no, uh, but. Yeah, they might have this now really to wind them up if that match happens this season. Mm. And it's still possible. I really hope not. Yeah. But, yeah, marvellous. I want to see Wrexham at Wembley in the FA Cup final. Yes. <laughs> and the FA Trophy as well. <laughs> yeah, we'll have that and all. Yeah, why not? The why treble. Not? Treble winners. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. <laughs> That's the thought. Um, just, a, just a little minor statistical point. We equal the club record for the most home wins from the start of the season. Wow. We've played 15 home games this season and won them all. We've only done that once in our history, and that was in 1904. So that's not bad. So we'll have a chance to beat that record next time we turn out at the race course. And also, in terms of consecutive wins, we are, beg your pardon, just a second. We have now, we are now third longest run of consecutive home wins in the club's history with 15. Only beaten by 17 in 1903 and 20 in 1905. And in league matches, the same. It's now third. I mean, that is remarkable, isn't it, really? It is. And that's why, if I'm perfectly honest with you, I find it a little difficult to judge what our best performance in the season is. I feel like I'm going to have to take a step back, let it all settle, and actually work it all out. Do you know what I mean? See, I, I'm saying this game because of the calibre of team yeah. we played against. Yeah. yeah. For me, the, the, yeah. yeah. Fair comments, because yeah. the way, like I mentioned at half time, the other teams have got all the good teams to play away from home. We've still got those strong teams to come at home, which maybe means, all right, then our consecutive wins have been against teams we expect to beat. You still got to do it, though. Yeah, and it's the first time I've seen the Wrexham team that actually does just go week in, week out, and just does actually win them all the games you ought to win. But also, you know, it's it's a good sign that in terms of uh, the rest of the season, when Notts County and Chesterfield go and have to dig in and get points from different away games. It's just the manner we're winning though at home. It's mm. frightening. Yeah. And the atmosphere, you know, I, the fans play a big part on how we play as well. You know, it make a bit. It makes a big difference when you've got ten thousand fans. Screaming, screaming, yeah. racks rack and songs. It, it, it's an absolute fortress here. Yeah, and it, long it make it may it continue. It is fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, honestly, so enjoyable to watch Wrexham play like this. Well, we'll be playing again on New Year's Day. The there is no embargo on highlights for this, so the moment I've finished editing the highlights, they'll be out there. <laughs> and I think I'm keen to get them out as quickly as possible. I think you all would have a good look at those. Um, and then the commentary again on Wrexham play. January the 1st, as we play Solihull in the second of these games, they will want revenge. No question about it, but goodness me, Wrexham are going for it. What a fun afternoon that was. This is how you spend Boxing Day, isn't it? Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Right, I'm going home to see my wife, my cats and my beer. <laughs> in that order. <laughs> Oh, and my big Wrexham to... book from Peter, Peter <laughs> yeah, Jones's yeah. big Wrexham book. All right, that first. Yeah. I'm going home to watch Frozen 2 with my daughter. Hey. Hey. I'm off to the pub. <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> and on those bombshells, we have been Mark Griffiths, Che Long, and the real Parky, Andrew <laughs> Parkinson, <laughs> from Wrexham AFC. <laughs> <Yee>! <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha